Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webcast today. My name is Andy Lennox. I'm the president of Logix Brands, and today we've got a 20 to 25 minute presentation on Halo Subterra and Subterra Plus. Um, uh, this presentation um, uh, is going to be uh, uh, conducted by Francis Roma, our technical director, and you're able to uh, answer, ask questions. Just type them into the little uh, question or the, the chat box on your control panel, and we will uh, get to as many questions as we can during the webcast. And um, without any further ado, over to you, Francis. Thanks, Andy. And thanks again, everyone, for being with us today for this webcast, Halo Subterra and Subterra Plus, the advanced below ground rigid insulation. <clears throat> So today we're gonna do a quick product overview. We're gonna talk about the applications, features, and benefits of using Subterra products. We'll compare the installation of Subterra to XPS, and we'll get a bit into environmental impacts, tech support, and then we'll end it off with some Q&A. So background, my name is Francis Roma, technical director for Logix. Logix makes a number of uh, foam building products, including Logix ICF, Heat sheet, which is an insulated floor panel system designed for radiant tubing, and Halo rigid insulation board products. <clears throat> we are part of a consortium of leading EPS molders, and together we have the strength of a multinational with nimble and attentive local support and service. Okay, so what is Halo? As I mentioned, Halo is our line of rigid insulation board products. What makes Halo unique is that the foam insulation is made of GPS, that's graphite infused EPS foam. So it's basically the white conventional EPS you see now, but with graphite built into it, and that's what gives it its gray color. I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, a little later, but for now I'll give you a quick intro into the Halo product lines. Uh, we have three distinct product lines and each is designed to suit specific applications. So we've got Intera and Intera Plus. They're used for above and below grade interior insulation. Intera and Intera Plus both have the same reflective laminate, but the difference is Intera Plus has been tested and approved for use on the interior without a thermal ignition barrier. And I should note that only applies in the US. We also have Subterra and Subterra Plus, and they're used for below grade exterior and under slab insulation. Uh, Subterra has a polypropylene laminate, Subterra Plus has a woven polypropylene laminate. Difference is that Subterra Plus is a little more durable than Subterra, so it's more suited for commercial and heavy construction, uh, but it can be used for residential as well. And lastly, we've got Xterra which has a perforated laminate and it's used for above grade exterior insulation. So all our products are meant to completely uh, provide continuous insulation for your building envelope. They're available in four by eight sheets, thicknesses of nine sixteenths up to two inches and custom dimensions are available. Okay, so for this webcast, we'll be talking about uh, Halo Subterra and Subterra Plus. Again, they're used for below grade exterior insulation. Uh, Subterra Plus has a GPS foam insulation with a thick polypropylene laminate. Uh, meant for residential and light construction, Subterra Plus, same foam insulation, but with a woven laminate applied to it. That makes it more durable, uh, more suited for commercial and heavy construction traffic. So the main difference between Subterra and Subterra Plus is really the laminate, the insulation is the same. So they're basically composed of just two components, the GPS insulation and their respective laminates. Uh, however, with just these two components, we're able to create a product that offers other useful benefits and features that you wouldn't get with your typical rigid insulation board product. <clears throat> So let's look at uh, some of the main features and benefits of using Subterra and Subterra Plus. Has a higher stable R value, R5 per nominal inch, that's higher than conventional EPS, and at par with XPS. It has a higher long-term R value than XPS as well. Continuous insulation creates a thermal break for your entire basement envelope. It's not affected by or promotes any mold growth. <coughs> 
It's water resistive. Um, it, the tape joints have been tested for weathering and UV exposure prior to the standard water penetration tests. It can replace your six mil poly as your vapor barrier. Uh, it protects your damp proofing against your foundation walls as well. The laminate that we apply to Subterra also protects the GPS insulation from damage during backfilling. And the laminate also provides a strong adhesive bond for tape sealing joints and penetrations. <clears throat> and because of the laminate we use, it actually allows us to use a lower density insulation than what you would typically use with, with rigid insulation. So let's talk a bit about Subterra Plus because there are some added benefits and uses for Subterra Plus. It's more tougher, durable, and more resilient due to the laminate that we use. Flex, it, it is a flexible insulation, as you can see. It's crack resistant, strong enough to withstand heavy construction loading without it cracking. It has a high flexural strength, greater than XPS. It provides lightweight protection over void forms. It installs quicker than most systems. And it can act as a radon barrier. Uh, it's been tested and just half inch of Subterra Plus is seven times more radon resistant than six mil poly. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so let's look at some of the typical applications that Subterra and Subterra Plus is used for. Um, it, we just went over some of the main features and benefits. So we know it's not just advanced installation board products, it's designed for other functions. It can act as a moisture barrier for the slab and against the foundation wall. So it becomes your first line of defense at keeping your moisture away from the foundation wall. Subterra will not only protect the damp proofing, but the laminate itself also protects the GPS insulation from damage during backfilling. So it won't puncture it or crack it. Subterra products have a very low permeance and can act as a vapor barrier under slabs. <clears throat> because it has such a low permeance, it can also act as your soil gas retarder or your radon barrier. And because it's so durable and lightweight, it makes it ideal as void form protection under structural slabs. And again, it's very flexible and durable. It can take a lot of abuse against construction loads. So you're not spending a lot of time taping cracked joints or replacing broken insulation. Okay, so that is Subterra and Subterra Plus. Uh, just to sum it up, whoops, sorry, getting a little ahead of myself. Uh, Subterra and Subterra Plus, the main difference is the laminate. Subterra has a thick polypropylene. Subterra Plus has a cross-woven laminate. Uh, R5 per nominal inch, it can be used. Sorry, there's something going funny going on with my slides here. It can be used for the same applications below grade. Uh, it can act as your vapor barrier. And Subterra Plus can also act as your radon barrier and void form protection. Okay, so that's Subterra and Subterra Plus. Let's compare Subterra products to XPS insulation. We'll look at insulation value, water absorption, durability, flexibility, and strength. <clears throat> okay, so Halo is made with graphite polystyrene. That's GPS. Uh, I just want to talk a bit about this so you, before we move further so you get a better idea of what uh, GPS is and why we use it. It's made by BASF under the brand name Neopore Plus. It's an advanced form of expanded polystyrene. GPS is conventional EPS with graphite particles. Um, EPS insulation materials we know resist heat flow. That's what makes it a good insulation material. But when you add graphite to it, it not only resists heat flow, it now also reflects and absorbs radiant energy. So it increases the R value by up to 18 to 30% without actually increasing the foam thickness. So because of that, it has an R5 per nominal inch. Neopore is independently tested and certified in US and Canada, and it's GreenGuard certified for low chemical emissions, meaning it's not gonna give off, give off any harmful chemicals during its use. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at the R values. GPS has a higher long-term R value than XPS. Neopore GPS provides zero thermal drift of R value. 
basically, it has a long lasting stable R value. It's not going to drastically reduce over time. XPS, on the other hand, uses a blowing agent in its production, and that's known to leak over time, reducing its R value. And because of that, they do have to stay long term thermal resistance. You'll notice in a lot of their warranties, they typically state 90% R value retained long term. So if you consider this, XPS long term R value is R4.5 instead of R5 per inch, like it is for GPS. So short term R values, GPS and XPS are the same. But when you consider R values, because GPS doesn't lose its R value, it actually has a higher R value than XPS. So when you're using GPS installation, you're actually getting the R value that you design to and will maintain long term. All right, let's look at water absorption. GPS retains less water than XPS. So there's a, I guess, myth out there that EPS is inferior to XPS because it has a higher water, water absorption value. So you can't use it for certain applications, especially in wet environments. Uh, EPS does absorb more water initially because it is more permeable than XPS, but because it is more permeable, it also retains less water. It lets that water escape just as easily. So it actually does a good job at retaining its R value. Unfortunately, the standard for uh, test for water absorption is based on short-term testing, and it doesn't reflect any of this. It only requires small samples to be immersed in water for up to five days and then immediately measured for water absorption. The problem with this test, though, is it doesn't tell you how much water is still left in there after a month, a year, or two years from now. Uh, so it's not really reflective of real-world conditions. And it wasn't meant to be. These test standards were meant for quality control purposes during, con con uh, during production. Um, and it wasn't meant to represent end use conditions. It, it actually states that in the standard itself. So I think many designers see these values that we have to report and they get the impression it reflects end use conditions when it actually doesn't. But what we, we know from independent studies is that water absorption has a, a, an effect on the long-term R value. We know that EPS retains less water than initially absorbed and that's because of its high permeance. So given long-term conditions, any water that does get in the EPS insulation gets out just as easily because of its high permeates. So it maintains its R value. With XPS, it retains absorbed water longer, and that's because, because of its low permeates. So given long-term conditions, any water that does make its way into the XPS insulation gets trapped in there longer. Uh, and the longer it sits in there, the more it's reducing its R value. There was one study where samples were buried for 15 years and it showed on average that the XPS samples had 19% water absorption and 52% R value retention. The EPS samples had 5% water absorption and retained 94% of its R value. So again, this is indicative of the uh, permeability of both the XPS and EPS insulation. Um, I guess, what does this all mean? It basically means, other than having to change the standard to reflect, you know, real-world conditions, um, what this means is that EPS actually does a good job at retaining its R value in wet conditions better than XPS does. All right, so let's look at durability. Uh, Subterra Plus is more durable at lower compressive strengths. <clears throat> Typically, for type 4 XPS insulation is used below grade. That's heavier than type 2 insulation that we typically use for Subterra. So naturally, that makes XPS stronger in compression because it is a denser material. But even though Subterra has a lower compressive strength and is lighter, it's designed to resist damage from heavy construction conditions. And it does it better than XPS does. So just one inch thick of Subterra is very flexible. It has a high flexural strength of 70 PSI versus 50 PSI for the heavier XPS insulation. Uh, because of this, it can endure repeated loading and is resilient against deformation. It also makes it crack resistant. Less cracks equals less time fixing broken insulation. You're not taping cracked insulation together or replacing damage portions. So you're saving time and money there. 
Uh, okay, so compressive strength. Compressive strength of XPS installation is overkill. Uh, so if you look at the compressive strength of XPS for below grade applications, it's typically 25 PSI or more. The compressive strength of Subterra is typically 16 PSI. We can, we do offer higher compressive strength similar to XPS, but we find in a lot of cases, especially in residential and a lot of commercial as well, that you, it's not needed. Uh, 16 PSI is more than plenty for what you typically run into. So just to give an example, uh, if we consider a six inch concrete slab, the compressive load on the insulation is around 0.5 PSI. That's less than 1% deformation on the insulation. Even when we consider creep and fatigue, the long-term deformation is still low. It's still within its elastic limit, meaning it won't permanently deform. You can take the load off and the insulation will bounce back to its original thickness. Now, if we add a 10,000 pound truck load, the wheel load from the truck and the load from the slab exerts about a six PSI compressive load onto the insulation. That's less than 2% deformation and it's still within the elastic limit and it's well below 25 PSI. So in many cases, you don't really need slab insulation with such high compressive strength, and that's why we offer a lower compressive strength product. And again, it's not going to be damaged during construction because the laminates we use are designed to make it very durable and flexible. Okay, so to sum it up, we think Subterra outperforms type, uh, type 4 XPS as below grade insulation. It's more durable, resilient, handles heavy construction loads, and takes a lot of abuse without damage. It's more flexible, has a higher fl flexural strength, so it makes it crack resistant, no taping or replacing broken pieces. Stable R value, same as XPS, but higher long-term R values than XPS. And so you see a lot of type four um, grandfathered into a lot of older specs because it's been there for a long time now but it's really not needed and really just ends up costing more money because you're using a heavier type of insulation product uh, compared to Subterra. Okay, let's move on to environmental impacts. Uh, we have five manufacturing plants in North America. Neopore GPS used in Halo has Green Guard certification. Uh, I mentioned this earlier, but basically it's a very rigorous testing program run by UL. And any products that pass this test has demonstrated they don't emit any harmful chemicals during its use. So Neopore GPS has Green Guard certification. It contributes to lead. It can be compacted and used in other manufacturing processes and gr or ground up and reused. Produces no harmful emissions. It's produced without the use of CFCs, HCFCs, or formaldehyde. And comparing it to XPS again, XPS can contain up to 16 times more global warming potential than GPS. GPS actually has uh, probably the lowest carbon footprint out of all rigid insulation board products. All right, so moving on to support, we have on-site support available. Uh, we offer a number of technical services. Um, we're happy to answer or address any issues you might have on site, whether it's in the design stage, construction, or just a building code issue. We're happy to answer your questions and uh, solve any issues that you might have. Uh, we do have CAD details. If you can't find a CAD detail you're looking for, uh, we're happy to help develop one for you that hopefully will work for your project and we'll do that in-house. We, all ha we have all the testing and evaluation reports in place, technical bulletins, specs and data sheets, installation guides. All this information can be found in the technical library, including other information I didn't get to. Um, and lastly, there is a tool that we have called the One Minute R Value Calculator available online. Uh, it's a very useful tool. What it will do is it will uh, tell you what your total R value is for your complete wall assembly. Um, and it'll tell you whether you hit the target R values based on the US or Canadian codes. And then you can fine tune your wall assembly to hit any target R value that you need. It's a very handy tool and it's worth checking out when you have time. Certification, CCMC and QAI listings. Uh, we've been tested to ULCS 701, 
C578 in the States. Ne Neopore UL, or sorry, Neopore Plus is also UL listed. We do have local dealers, and if you're interested in looking at samples, contact us and we'll get you in touch with someone to get you samples. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the presentation. Um, hopefully that gave you a better idea of our Halo products, more specifically Subterra and Subterra Plus, its features and benefits, its applications, how it compares with XPS installation, environmental impacts and the support, kind of support we have to offer. Um, so from this point, I'll move on to the Q&A section, but before I do, I just wanna thank you all again for taking the time to attend this webcast. So let's move on to the Q&A. Um, I did get some questions ahead of time, so I'm gonna answer those first. If I didn't get to your question or if you have a comment, we'll open up the floor uh, at the end of this Q&A uh, part that I'm doing. Okay, so the first question that came in was, does the Hilti GXIE work on Subterra? Um, the GXIE is a fastening system that's designed for rigid board installation, uh, I believe. Um, if it works on any rigid board installation, it'll work on Subterra. Really, the installation of Subterra isn't any different than what you would do with any installation board product. So there's really no specialized training involved. It's, it's, the installation is pretty much the same. So GXIE can work with Subterra. Uh, can you use it to reduce footing depth? Uh, quick answer that, to that is yes. Uh, generally, your, your footing goes below the frost line. If you add enough insulation though around the foundation, you could keep the soil around the house warm enough. And that would allow you to basically create a shallow foundation. So as long as you've got enough insulation around there, it's, it's doable. Uh, how is Subterra fastened? On, on the slab, it sits on the substrate. On the foundation walls, you can temporarily hold it in place with uh, construction glue. If you have to, you, you can use mechanical fasteners, but you want to limit the amount you use. Uh, once it's held in place, the backfill will secure it even further. Is it waterproof? Um, Subterra has been tested to hold up to two feet of standing water at the tape joints, so at the most vulnerable section. Uh, and that's after it's been aged and uh, uh, exposed to UV. So it is a water resistant barrier, but it hasn't been tested as a waterproofing product. You still want to apply um, an approved waterproofing application against your foundation wall when you're using Subterra, like you would do with any insulation board product. Can it be used for both interior and exterior together in your foundation wall? Yes, you can. You can use it on the exterior and you can use it on the interior, uh, Subterra on the interior if you wanted to. But we do have Interra, Halo Interra, which is meant for use on the interior. It has a reflective laminate on it. So you would get a little more efficient wall assembly if you used Interra instead of Subterra on the interior. All right, so those were some of the questions that came in. I think at this point, I'll hand it over to Andy and uh, have him open up the floor. So over to you, Andy. Well, thank you very much, Francis. I've uh, uh, had a few questions coming in and I've answered a couple of them uh, directly uh, by reply, but uh, I've got a question here, Francis, from Corey, and it's a pretty specific question. I'm not sure if sure. you'll have the answer. Do you know of anybody that has used Subterra as a form of backing in a dome shotcrete application. Form backing on shotcrete application. In a dome shotcrete application. If if the if Subterra is not being used structurally, I don't think there would be an issue with that. The only thing I would make sure, I'm pretty sure that the shotcrete would stick to Subterra, but you'd want to do a little test sample to make sure. As long as it's not doing any structural, if you're not expecting Subterra to do anything structural, um, it's just basically the foam backing against your form, then it's totally fine. Okay, all right. Well, that's it for the questions, Francis. Listen, everybody, thank you very much for spending your time with us. We very much appreciate it. Wish everyone has a good weekend going into the holiday season shortly. Francis, I'll give you the last word. 
Thanks again, everyone, for being with us and have a great holiday.